This is Hollywood. And from the Samuel Goldwyn Studios, it's The Movie Game. Starring today, Dan Rowan, Dick Martin, Greer Garson, Sharon Farrell, the nationally syndicated columnist, Mr. Army Archard, and your movie game host, Mr. Sonny Fox. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We're glad you could join us at the movie game. And let's start by talking to our distinguished panel, starting with distinguished Daniel Rowan. Been here all week. I'm getting a little sick of you, Sonny. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I'm very fond of no, you, Dan. No, I was just kidding you, Sonny. You're a charming fellow. All the way from New York, right? <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, I know you've enjoyed being next to Greer Garrison, as Certainly I have enjoyed uh, being on the show with her. You've been lovely all week, Greer, and very, very sharp, may I say. Really? I got sharpened up doing laughing with these two. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not just another pretty face. You've got something. Uh... <laughs> well, thanks for that. All right, would you like to introduce... Uh, I would indeed. Woody, our, uh, our teammate is one of this week's high-scoring winners, and his name is Mr. Woody Busse. Woody, welcome back. All right, now let's meet your competition, and pretty tough competition it is, too, starting with lovely Sharon Farrell. Sharon, I like your hair. It's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> I worked all morning. She's, she's about that. the most intense gameplay we've ever had on this show, I think. Kill. She, she killed. <laughs> Dick? You're embarrassing me. <laughs> Sharon loaned me her scarf yesterday, and I, today she loaned me her brassiere. <laughs> I, I do. I do. I have it. Shoulders. <laughs> Moving right along, Dick. Would you like to introduce your teammate? Hi. <laughs> well, uh, our teammate, Sharon and mine, yes. is uh, C. Cup. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our teammate is the other high-scoring winner for this week, and her name is Gina Haldane. Okay, our two big winners are indeed back with us today to play for all our regular prizes, plus... Uh, <laughs> well, it's no wonder. Plus a special Winner of the Week award of $1,000 in cash. All right, now, Woody and Gina, we're going to see which one of you knows the most about the movies. You and your star teammates, as usual, are going to answer some questions. The team that scores the highest wins the game. And if your team wins by answering every single question correctly, including the action round, well, of course, there's an exciting bonus that's yours for a clean sweep. First, a real winner's car, the Pontiac Tempest Le Mans Convertible, a sporty machine like only Pontiac knows how to build. With wide track stance and quick, responsive handling and performance, Pontiac takes the fun of driving seriously. Next, the Evinrude Sport Fisherman 120 with gull wing hull, complete with 120 horsepower, four cylinder motor, convertible top, folding windshield, and three position seats. The powerful, sleek sports fisherman from Evinrude, plus a vacation in Acapulco. Yes, you'll fly American Airlines with new Americana service on all transcontinental astrogen jet flights. American Airlines wants everyone to make themselves at home the American way. They are all yours for a clean sweep right here on the movie game. And we'll be all set to find out who our winner of the week is right after this message. Okay, this is it, the contest to see which is our winner of the week for $1,000. Here is your first screen test, Woody and Gina. Our first example is the 1930 Oscar-winning classic about German recruits under fire in World War I. It stars Lou Ayers and Zazu Pitts and it's Gina's Bell. 
all quiet on the western You're front. right for 20 points. <laughs> Which uh, gives Dick and uh, Sharon a chance to add to your points with these next two close-ups. From the German trenches, we pass to the French side for close-up number one. In the modern anti-war film Paths of Glory, a French officer refuses to further sacrifice his men in a bloody and wasteful battle. Who played the officer? Kirk Douglas. You're right, five points. <laughs> Close up number two, John Mills is only one of a host of stars now appearing in a new British anti-war film called... Oh, what a lovely war. You're right, another five points, and there's 30 points up there for Gina. <laughs> and screen test number two coming up. The sick mind of the political killer has often been explored on film, Woody and Gina. Frank Sinatra once portrayed an assassin hired to murder the President of the United States in what film? Extra clue? Okay, we don't need the extra clue. Woody? Uh, Manchurian Candidate? I'm afraid that's not the answer. Hold still now while I give the clue to uh, Gina and see if she can guess it. The title is the opposite of gradually. Um, suddenly? You're right. 20 points. <laughs> I think you were pushed into that by Sharon's uh, waves coming out there. Okay, close up number one now for Sharon and Dick. A real life presidential assassin was portrayed in Prince of Players. John Derrick played the part. Name the assassin. Huh? Oh, the, the part he played? Name the assassin. Time is up. All right. John Wilkes Booth. You're right. Five points oh, go up on Woody's scoreboard. That wasn't fair. I knew it was John Back to Dick and Sharon for close-up two. In another film, Lawrence Harvey was brainwashed to kill a presidential candidate named the film. Manchurian, Manchurian, Manchurian candidate. candidate. That's the one it was for five points. Thank you, Dick. <laughs> five points for Woody, 55 points for Gina. We come up to screen test number three, and we're going to take a look, Woody and Gina, at some of our made-up movie fan magazine headlines. In this headline, we're looking for a film title. And Natalie Wood reveals all, it says. Carl Malden blushes Woody. Gypsy. Gypsy is right for 20 points. <laughs> now we have close-ups here for Dan and Greer. More on fan magazine headlines and close-up number one. We're looking for another film title as we view this one. Heston confesses, when Rex asked me to paint the walls, I hit the ceiling. Name the film. He played Michelangelo to, uh, Charlton Heston was Michelangelo and uh, Anthony Quinn, uh, I mean, what's his name, was the Pope that uh, was the... Uh, Michelangelo. Michelangelo. Time's up. We go over to the other team and give them a chance for five points. The name of the film. No, you can't help. Oh, can't. she can't help us? No, no we can't help her. Oh. Michelangelo or something. No, Michelangelo. The Agony and the Ecstasy. The Agony and the Ecstasy, the and the ecstasy oh, but nobody gets any points ah, for that one. Darn no it, points. At least All right, but we go back ecstasy. now. We have one more close-up here. This headline should suggest a memorable film to you. Lee Remick toasts Jack Lemon and toasts him again and yeah, again that's, uh, and again. Days, days, days of wine and that's right, for five points. Okay, 30 points up there for Woody, 55 points for Gina. And we shall be back to find out who our winner of the week is, who gets $1,000, but first, this message.
In the battle for $1,000 and the winner of the week here on the movie game, it's 30 points for Woody, 55 points for Gina. We get ready for screen test number four. Now, love is a year-round affair, Woody and Gina, but for certain stars in certain films, love was a matter of a month. Here, for example, are Sandy Dennis and Anthony Newley. All right, we have Woody's Bell. Sweet November. He says, Sweet November, let's take this calendar up and take a look. And you are right, it is Sweet November. You have 20 points. Boy, that's good. Okay, Dan, that brings up Dan and Greer for their close-ups. Flipping the calendar back a bit, we find Joan Fontaine, Joseph Cotton having an affair in Capri. According to the title, in what month did they have their affair? In what month did they have their affair? September. September, September is right. Affair. It's the yeah. September affair. And let's, uh, let's prove it by right there you go. Right for 25 points. Joan, All right, one more close-up coming up. <clears throat> Jack Lemmon, Catherine Deneuve were recently also romantically foolish. According to the title, in what month? Um, yeah, I'm sorry, dude. Uh, mm. Lady just... Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I... Um, sorry. Okay, we go sorry. to the other team to find out what month. Yes. April Fool's. April Fool's is right. Five points. Okay. The score now reads 55 for Woody, 60 points for Gina, and the fifth screen test coming up. And once again, it's time to spotlight another of Hollywood's all-time classic films. This intriguing mystery with a fabulous title song told the unusual tale of a cop. Yes, Woody? Laura. Laura is right. That's the name of the film we were looking for. 75 points for Woody and a chance to add to that from Dan and Greer with these next two close-ups. The elegant character shown in close-up number one went on from his role in Laura to play other fine performances. But he never topped his portrayal of Laura's would-be murderer, Waldo. Who is he? Clifton Webb. Clifton Webb is right for another five points. Close-up number two, the murder weapon, a shotgun was hidden in Laura's apartment. Where was it? In the it, grandfather's grandpa. clock. In the clock is right for another five points. The score is 60 for Gina, 85 for Woody. Remember, up uh, for grabs, in addition to the regular jackpot, is $1,000. And coming up now, our final round. Army Archid's portrait of a well-known movie star. Listen, and the moment you know the celebrity's name, hit that signal. Now again, I remind you, this is worth 50 points, terribly important, obviously. You may consult with your stars on this one. Okay, here he is with Hollywood's, uh, uh, with this portrait, Hollywood's favorite columnist, Mr. Army Archer. Thank you very much, Sonny Thank you. Well, team, today's portrait really belongs in the gallery of international stars, for the subject is not only known professionally in many countries, but also maintains homes in Europe and the United States. No one would have guessed that this frail, typical American from the very heart of American corn country would one day have been the professional darling of such foreign film greats as Francois Truffaut and Jean-Luc Godard. She's co-starred with such international, and the light is on. Sonny? It's from Gina. Now, Gina, this is 50 points, the game, $1,000. Who do you think this is? Gene Seberg. She says it's Gene Seberg. Is that correct? That is absolutely right. Yay! Oh, and with 110 oh, points, you're the winner of the movie game. Gina does it. Congratulations, Gina. $1,000 goes to you for that. Oh, great. And thank you, Ami, for today's Hollywood Pleasure. portrait. We're looking forward to seeing you in a few moments. Well, that is very exciting, and it was a very close ding-dong battle all the way today with two expert movie buffs. Woody, you did very, very well. You have your $750 gift certificate from the last time, jackpot. We add to it an $85 gift certificate from today. Good. Well, I'm so excited. <laughs> and with it goes our thanks for playing the movie game. Congratulations. Good luck to you. Thank You're very you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Gina, let's see. You already won our special $1,000 prize today. You won a $750 jackpot earlier this week. You've just won a jackpot worth $250, but there's more in store for you because, of course, our stars will be up here acting their little hearts out in just a minute. And if you can guess the puzzles, you'll double or even triple your jackpot. We'll be with that right after this.
Okay, Gene, it's time for your action round. We want to see if you can take that 250 and double it and maybe even triple it, depending upon how you do with these next two puzzles. Okay, let's get started with our first puzzle. On stage, Dan Rowan and Greer Garson, and this time you're looking for the name of a well-known actress. <laughs> action! <clears throat> I just love your new painting. The textures and the hues are so brilliant. Thank you. I discovered some tubes of paint in all different hues, owned by the late Leslie Howard. A real Howard Hughes discovery, eh? <laughs> yes. They'd been hidden by one of his heirs, a sister-in-law, who disappeared and went into hiding. You mean she was an outlaw-in-law? Right. And finding her is like looking for a needle in a haystack. No clues at all? Well, they knew she was selling a line of imported cosmetics. An Italian line? No, a French line. <laughs> cosmetics especially designed for the woman with dark eyes and a pale face. And they still couldn't find her? No, before they could catch up with her... Yes. Her company went bust. A lot of clues busting out of that one. Who do you think it is? Jane Russell. Jane Russell is right. You got your five hundred dollars. Stepping up now, the team of Dick Martin and Sharon Farrell. And the mail has been just flooding in about them this week, so they're back again. This time with the name of a much loved character actor. Action. Congratulations on your purchase of this golf course. Did you find it in pretty good condition? Well, the previous owner made some mistakes, but I've resodded the greens, and I'll soon have them growing my way. Growing your way? That's what I said, growing my way. Ah, uh, who was the previous owner? Uh, the church. Uh, the whole area was a cloistered nunnery, and they rarely welcomed strangers. Really? Mm. Yes, and their maintenance costs, of course, were very low. Why? Well, now, all the workers were professional gardeners. And then? And then there were nuns. Mm, yes. Why is that funny? Why is everybody laughing? I don't know. <laughs> Do you have any partners? Yes, my partners are Dinah Shore and Fred Waring. Dinah Shore and Fred Waring? Do they approve of your... putting in the... Sh pudding, pudding. Putting. No, putting is putting? right. Putting? Oh. Right the first time. Putting though. in the... Sh Chunks of new sod? Yes, yeah, yes and no. Sh sure, and I miss the old sod. Yeah? But Fred seems indifferent. I don't know what we're doing here. It goes here. on. You mean... <laughs> you mean... Yes, page 17A. Is, uh, we have to remind wearing of the greens. Why? And Sharon waves consecutive translation. We go right on to ask you How for you this much-loved character Fitzgerald. actor. Barry Fitzgerald. You're right, my George. Oh, Very yeah. good. You have a jackpot worth $750. Very good. Well, I would like to say that our stars this week have done some very fine playing, and I think, I really mean this, it, you've good sports to do it, and I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Congratulations. We'll learn all about your vast swag right after this message. We'll be back. <laughs> I, I, let's find out from Johnny Gilbert what you want to hear, Jackpot, Johnny. 
<laughs> well, Gina, this time you won an island cabinet bar in beautiful Royal Birch by the J.H. Shirey Company of Louisville, Kentucky, complete with plastic countertop and stainless steel sink. And for more fun at home, how about this seven-foot pool table, complete with accessories? Then for dancing or listening, the Ampex Micro 86 Stereo Cassette Tape Player Recorder features instant play, easy-to-use controls, match speakers, and microphones. It's from Ampex, the name preferred by professionals. They are all yours from the movie game. And Gina, I, if you don't, I imagine you have a lot of swings, but if not, they're going to come around with that pool table, I guarantee you. You were leaving here today with over $2,500 in cash and prizes, and that's more than almost anybody on this stage for one day's work it's been one week's work i should say that's not a bad bad week's work right certainly isn't gina nice to see you and good, good luck to you congratulations Thank you. you're very very welcome <laughs> and now ladies and gentlemen here they are once again the andrews no here's mr army <laughs> archard and friends thank you very much sonny we're also very happy for our winner of the week we're talking here a little earlier about some of the wonderful films that our young actress Sharon Farrell has done in so short a time. One of them was Marlowe, in which she really had a fight. She's a real method actress, and I predict she's going to be a very, very big star. And the fight that she had in Marlowe was, uh, was one that perhaps the audience didn't realize had some behind-the-scenes implications. Can you tell us about Well, I don't know. No, I, I will. Go ahead. All right. Well, James Gardner never liked me very much. He didn't like you? No, he hated me. Because uh, every time we do the scene, they always made me have you wear makeup on your arms and your legs and everywhere. We had this fight scene. He, got, he kept getting mad because I'd get makeup on his pants. He didn't want me to touch him during the fight scene. It was impossible. And Gail Hunnicutt's teeth kept falling out. Her nails kept flying. Because she bites her nails just like I do, but she had to wear these long fingernails because she's supposed to be very, you know. Uh -huh. So between the two of them, it was impossible. I told you Sharon Farrell's going to go very far in this business. But Sharon is a, True. As, 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 a, as, a, as a new and, you know, a very pretty young actress in the I business. I probably shouldn't have said that, huh? No, it's okay. okay. No. This well, will be number three there. Well, Gail is nice. I like her anyway. Well, you, you won't be doing many love scenes with her, so we don't have to worry about it. Although, I don't know the way pictures are going now. Right, exactly. Have, have they asked you to do any of these so-called nudie scenes? Oh, I won't do them. You, no, They've asked me, but I won't do them. No? Nope. Good girl. But what about you, girl? What do you feel about that? I don't think... Uh, I don't think any young actress needs to sleep her way to the top or take off her clothes on the screen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If you, if you were starting all over and you didn't have a name or anything, would you then? Certainly not. Dick would. <laughs> oh, you got <can't> wait. <laughs> oh, uh, then no, he wouldn't. Sure. You would? Yeah? Listen, uh, naked is good. Clothes are bad. <laughs> sure, I went to a nudist wedding once, and I remember the preacher said, Young lady, do you take this man? She said, no, I think I'll take that one. Talking about happy Hollywood marriages, Dan, how long have you and Dick been, been together? We're not married. We're not married, dear. You Come mean, on, tell geez. them we're married. Admit it. No, no. he's got a pretty wife. We have two children. Yeah. <laughs> No, we have three children, actually, one of each. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's has, getting worse. Has Hollywood that. been trying to break you up? Everyone yeah, wonders. Not, Hollywood been trying to break no, you two up. He breaks me up. <laughs> <laughs> no, Holly, Hollywood's been very nice to us. They've left us completely alone. Yeah. <laughs> We, we don't bother them, they don't bother us. <laughs> That's right. We cherish you. Isn't that uh, true? The world needs laughter, uh, so we cherish you. Not only that, they're nice. I must say, I don't like very many actors. And I, I really, and I, I hate comedians usually. And I oh, think really? you're both very nice. Thank you. You know, they're yeah, egotistical. You can't get to the mirror because they're there. Neither one of these fellows even wear any makeup. How about <laughs> Steve McQueen when you first he's met him? He's another one. I like him, too. You do like him? Yes, he's, he's a nice. man, anyway. Were you upset when you... <laughs> I mean, he is. He's a real man. Jim Garner, we're only kidding. Whatever she said, <laughs> believe me. Oh, he's, he's a man. He's just... I've had lovely just... leading men all the time. I'm very lucky. I so, you've had some very one. classy... We would do a lot of We do a lot of work with Tiny right. Tim. <laughs> oh, but think of what Greer Garson has had for leading men. Yeah, she has had the classy ones of all time. Oh, wow. Ronald Coleman, oh, Robert Donner. The Peck. darling, wonderful wow. man, yes. I, I used to say Random Harvest was my favorite picture, plus any picture with Walter Pigeon. Yeah. yeah. But all my partners have been great gentlemen and great actors. 
Well, I, we couldn't, we couldn't hope to follow that. Well, Steve McQueen. What, I got to go to the shop now. <laughs> I just Thanks so very go. much for, for being with us. And, and we'll be watching to see if you can continue your career under, under these auspices. Queer, thank you so thank very much. Sure, thank you. Dan and Dick. And now to you, Sonny. Oh, yeah. We'll be looking forward to more of your Inside Hollywood stories, Army. And we'd like to thank our splendid, uh, very expert panel this week, may I say. Not only a lot of fun, but really knew a lot. No, no for sure about it. Really sincerely meant. Dan Rowan and Greer Garson and Sharon Farrell and Dick Martin and Jim Garner, wherever you are. We'll all be seeing you again. We'll meet again to play the movie game. We'll be seeing you, too. This is Sonny Fox saying thank you and see you at the movies. All consolation prizes from the famous Spiegel Catalog Company. The Spiegel Catalog features over 50,000 quality items. Spiegel, Chicago, Illinois.